We are currently living in George Orwell's 1984 and St. John's Apocalypse. We are living in the times of sorrow, and these are just the beginnings. The exponential changes are on their way and when we see the full evidence of God's promises come to fruition with the fulfillment of Ezekiel chapter 38 and 39, you can then nail it down to the final seven years of the tribulation upon man from the demonic realm. In other words, we ain't seen nothing yet. Unless there is some sort of unforeseen miracle, millions of people could literally starve to death in 2021. We are facing a global food crisis that is unlike anything we have ever seen before in modern times, and 2021 is going to be the year when it starts to become extremely painful all over the globe. But don't take my word for it. David Beasley is the head of the UN World Food Program, and so he is in a better position to assess the global hunger crisis than any of us. According to Beasley, 2021, is literally going to be catastrophic, and his organization is facing, the worst humanitarian crisis year since the beginning of the United Nations. 2021 is literally going to be catastrophic based on what we're seeing at this stage of the game, said Beasley, adding that for a dozen countries, famine is knocking on the door. He said 2021 was likely to be, the worst humanitarian crisis year since the beginning of the United Nations, 75 years ago and, we're not going to be able to fund everything, so we have to prioritize, as I say, the icebergs in front of the Titanic. Beasley is feverishly trying to raise more money to meet the rising tide of hunger that he is witnessing all across the planet, but he feels like he is fighting a losing battle. Freakish weather patterns, crippling droughts and colossal armies of locusts have devastated crops throughout 2021, and the pandemic is putting an extreme amount of stress on global food distribution systems. As a result, food prices are surging and hundreds of millions of people living in impoverished countries now find themselves unable to afford enough food to eat on a regular basis. Here in the United States, approximately 50 million people have experienced food insecurity at some point in 2021. According to PBS, this hunger crisis is even worse than what we went through during the last recession. Those fighting hunger say they've never seen anything like this in America, even during the Great Recession of 2007-2009. After the initial wave of fear caused by the pandemic started to subside, a lot of Americans thought that we were out of the woods, but now a new wave of lockdowns is being instituted and CNN is reporting that the hunger crisis in America is actually getting worse as we approach the end of the year. Hunger skyrocketed at the pandemic's onset because of record high job losses, school closures and strained food pantries. But at that point, Americans were better positioned to make ends meet with support from the Corona Aid, Relief, and Economic Security Act CARES Act and the Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program SNAP, or Food Stamp, benefits. Yet, as we near year's end, the problem is getting worse, not better. With the expiration of CARES Act benefits and without any hint as to when the next round of federal aid will hit people's pockets, families around the country are suffering and will likely continue to do so throughout the holiday season. Could it be possible that 2021 will end up being even painful for hungry Americans than 2020 was? That is difficult to imagine, because the numbers from this year have been truly horrific. The AP analyzed Feeding America data from 181 different food banks, and they found that those food banks had given out 57% more food in 2020 than they did in 2019. If the demand continues to skyrocket, eventually there simply will not be enough food for everyone. We are all familiar with the photographs from the Great Depression that show men waiting in very long lines for free food. Well, the same thing is happening now, but with a twist. Needy people are lining up as early as 2 a.m. and are waiting in their vehicles for up to 12 hours just to get a few bags of provisions from their local food banks. The history books are filled with iconic images of America's struggles against hunger. Among the most memorable are the Depression-era photos of men standing in breadlines, huddled in long coats and fedoras, their eyes large with fear. An overhead sign reads, Free Soup. Coffee and a donut for the unemployed. This year's portrait of hunger has a distinctively bird's-eye view, enormous traffic jams captured from drone-carrying cameras. Cars inching along, each driver waiting hours for a box or bag of food. From Anaheim, California to San Antonio, Texas to Toledo, Ohio and Orlando, Florida and points in between, thousands of vehicles carrying hungry people queued up for miles across the horizon. In New York, and other large cities, people stand, waiting for blocks on end. Has anyone tried to buy meat lately? 
Have you noticed the stores jacked up the prices about 20% or more? Remember when California oranges were 8 for a buck and there was a bad frost in Florida and California oranges went up to a buck each? Remember that maybe 18 years later, they are still a buck, or more. Same thing happened during dubia years when beef prices doubled. Well, they're doubling again now. Wanna bet they never come down. This is how the rich grab your $1,200 stimulus on one end, while they're getting a $1 million stimulus on the other. Of course my viewers were warned in advance that all of this was coming. For years I have been warning my viewers that economic collapse, civil unrest and global famine were approaching, and I strongly urged everyone to stockpile food and supplies. Now we are constantly being bombarded by headlines that declare that the days that I have been warning about are here, and 2021 threatens to be even worse than 2020 was. Food supply chain needs downgrade, not upgrade. Needs deregulation, decentralization, deamalgamation and few other de's to go back to food locally produced, locally processed and locally sold without much supply chain to control it. Of course, depending on product, locally means same county, same state or same country. That will be real food security. They are dumping milk and plowing food into the ground because restaurants are closed. We still have to feed 300 million people in this country. The overall demand for food has not changed. Where we get our food from has. Demand by consumers has not changed, just where we get the food from. The reason that farmers are plowing into the fields is simple. Unemployment is paying better. The reason that farmers are dumping their product is because it is a loss for which our government compensates them for which is more than what they would have gotten for their product. Local apples, potatoes, carrots and plenty other products are already stored here by growers or wholesalers from one harvest to another. I am sure that plenty other food products can be stored locally like has been done for centuries before the invention of supply chain. Nobody really needs to eat kiwis or even oranges out of season. Today, I came across a news story that I think is an appropriate metaphor for what we are potentially facing in 2021. Hundreds of black vultures have invaded the town of Marietta, Pennsylvania and they are causing tremendous problems. They are tearing up rooftops and garbage cans, they are defecating all over the place, and they spew vomit that smells like rotting corpses on sidewalks and homes. Residents have been desperately trying to scare them away, but they can't shoot the vultures because they are protected by law. More permanent solutions are in short supply, as the black vulture is federally protected and can't be exterminated without permission. It's illegal in the US to trap, kill or own black vultures without a permit and violators can face a fine of up to $15,000 and up to six months in prison. So those vultures will get to stay in Marietta for as long as they wish. Sadly, vultures are now circling over America too. I have made countless videos about the rotting, decaying carcass that our society has become, and those that hate traditional American values have increasingly gained more and more power. Now we are just a few weeks away from the start of 2021, and there is every indication that it is going to be an exceedingly painful year. You ain't seen nothing yet. The violence, and the hate will only grow, when you add hunger. Soylent Green may yet become a reality. Especially if they close everything down again. This is going to be quite a ride. If you aren't frightened you aren't paying attention. 1984 is here. The coup is in full swing and corporations are making their move to restrict what Trump wouldn't and government can't, legally at least. To have the purchasing power to afford to go to a business that will prepare a meal of your choosing is a sign of a prosperous society. The fact that this is going away surely is a sign that prosperity is eroding. And why? Because of fear and because our overall health is a ruse. Disease means not being at ease. Your body is in a fight to stay alive. People need to understand terrain theory. Look it up. The most important part of the disease pyramid is the host. That's you and me, ladies and gentlemen. My parents went through the Great Depression and thanks to them I learned to save and not throw food away. That was my generations, financially independent and retire early. This was the Nomad Economist. Please like. Share. Leave me a comment. Subscribe. And please take some time to subscribe to my backup channels, I do upload videos there too. You'll find the links in the description box. You will also find a PayPal link if you want to make a donation. Thank you wholeheartedly to all those of you who have donated.
Stay safe and healthy friends.